Welcome to the Fast Lane Car and welcome to Byers, Colorado and the High Plains Raceway. And today, as a journalist, I get to drive the GTR, the Ford Focus ST, the Camaro, and hopefully not that ambulance on the racetrack. And we're going to produce a series of video reviews from the racetrack. Now, I am not a race car driver. I'm just a lucky enough journalist who gets to drive hundreds of cars every year. So I'm going to give you the fastest time I can and the best impression I can of these everyday cars. Well, not the GTR, but the rest of these everyday cars on the racetrack. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Bring you 10 road cars reviewed on the racetrack. Why? Well, because we can. No, 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 no. We think that if a road car does well on the racetrack, it'll do exceptionally well on the road. So, starting today, we're going to do these in order of lap times with the slowest to the fastest. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. If there is a two wheel off incident, by that I mean if two wheels leave the racing surface, come in and you'll sit and cool your heels for 10 minutes. If that happens a second time, you'll sit for 30 minutes. If it happens a third time, you're done. Okay? Four wheels off is obviously the same thing, but all four wheels are off the road surface. Mm -hmm. Then you come in the first time, sit for 30 minutes, second time, you're done. Any car contact, you're done. Okay? If there's a spin, we consider that four off. So if you spin, come in, sit 30 minutes. All right, I'm in the Mazda 6 right now. And uh, first lap is an out lap, which means I get to kind of warm up the car. I've got a big Mercedes coming up on my butt, the AMG, so I'm going to let him pass me just because I want a clear road when I get to do my fast lap. I'm going to go slow here, let him come by. Um, this car is very trackable. Did you hear that? That's what the Mercedes sounds like. It's full boil. It's pretty good. But let's check out this family ride on the track. That's a cool part about this event. I mean, you get to take a family car like a Mazda 6 and see how it does when it's pushed to its limits by an average driver. That would be me. All right, here we go. I already like the way the car handles. It feels very neutral. And by that, I mean it's not front heavy. It's not rear heavy. I get a good sense of where the wheels are. It's not pushing. There's not a lot of understeering going into the front. There's probably a lot more of the front. Okay, here comes my hot lap. I am being slowed down by a Mercedes AMG. Come on, guy. I got one lap to get a good time in. Why are you going so slow? That was not ideal. Now he's completely slowing me down. Now he's like, no, nah, this lap will not work. Uh, I'm going to have to go one more lap because uh, I got a Mercedes that's got 500 horsepower that's like tooling along. It's not giving me a chance to really try out this car. So I'm going to pass him and see if I can try this again. Alright, here we go. A hot lap in the Mazda 6. Now, like I said, this car feels very tossable. It's very neutral. I took it to the limit there, a little bit of a four-wheel drift. It's a front-wheel drive car, so you do get a little bit of that torque steer, but actually there's not a lot since there's not enough power to really get a lot up here. It's only aspirated, sky active. That means that uh, you know, here I am in the straightaway and it's it's full out. And I'm not going all that fast. Alright, here comes my hot lap. Time race started, I've crossed the start finish line. Coming into the first turn, if I were braver, I would hit the brakes later, but I'm not. And I don't want to go off. You can feel this car's mass. I mean, obviously it's a four-door family sedan, and you can, you can feel that coming around these screens. You hear those tires? They're just struggling for adhesion. I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, the steering's about a 7. I can sort of put it where I want to, not with precision surger, surger, <laughs> surgical like uh, attempts, but you know, there's a good shot of knowing where they are. Okay, here I am on the back straightaway. I've got a floor at 6,000 RPM, 80 miles an hour. How deep will I go into this curve before I freak out and get scared? Right about there. 
I do not want to go off the track because once I'm off the track, well, I have to take a break. All right, coming around this turn, the wheels and the tires are struggling for it. I'm going to try to clip this apex, get the best and fastest possible time. Here it comes around. Okay, I'm going to clip it. Maybe. Not enough power. All right, clip that one. Let's see if I can clip this apex and then floor it out. There's no push out of the corner just because it's front-wheel drive and it's a sky active engine so it doesn't have the power. But here comes my lap time. Let's see what it did. And there's a stop finish. 114.14. 114.14 is my best time. Cool down lap. It's not bad. You know, I like this car. I think for a family sedan, there's a lot of road feel. And you get it out on the track and you can feel that it's set up for a comfortable ride. I mean, this car is leaning over quite a bit. It's not a sporty suspension in terms of track sportiness. It's a sporty suspension in terms of road sportiness. And that's a whole different world when you're on the track. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Thanks for watching. Remember, come back again for the next video in this series of speedy racetrack reviews. This has been the Mazda 6. See you guys next time. Ciao. Alright guys, I'm in the Fiat 500 Abart Cabriolet. I've got the top up because it would be very loud. I'm going to hit my little sport button which gives me about 20 pound feet of torque extra. And uh, let's see how this Fiat 500 does.